Yo, what's going on, guys? What is up besides Ken Griffin, Citadel, Robin Hood, the bleepery that is since Friday? Here we are, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, talking about this. This is the end game. I don't care if people say no dates or blast me for whatever you're saying. Um, after nine months, it's kind of funny. This is the bottom of the ninth. Nine months, bottom of the ninth. There is nowhere for these guys to go. The amount of crazy crap that I have seen today, you got, there's so much to cover here, you guys. I'm going to keep this damn thing short. Um, first of all, let's just start out of the gate. I'm not going to do another 20-minute video, you guys. I, I don't like doing those. I know you guys don't mind, but I feel like I'm taking up too much time. I don't know why I think that. I'm a goofball. Anyway, now let me ask you this question. As most of you know, I am not the, the friendliest of Twitter people, as in I don't know how to use the damn thing. I can very, Every time I, I reply to somebody, I retweet it or quote tweet. I don't know what in the hell I'm doing. But one thing I do know uh, look at this guy up here. I love this name. I've seen this dude before. Look at this. Outstanding, sir. Absolutely outstanding. Um, hey, Twitter, how much did Ken Griffin pay to have this removed? Number one trending on Twitter, Ken Griffin lied. As you guys know, I'm sure you've seen it. Ken G, get over to Superstone. Get over to the AMC page. Get over to anything on Reddit, stock market related, whether it's even cryptocurrency. Ken Griffin is blasted from here all the way to Guatemala, wherever you want to call it. This, you guys, this is nine months of uh, all of this. It's kind of funny because we're in the bottom of the ninth. Nine month, bottom of the ninth. I don't give a shit about, blast me if you want about dates and all of this stuff. There's too many eyeballs on this. This guy lied. Vlad lied. The everything is over leveraged, as we know. The whole thing is about to explode. This here takes the cake to me. I've said this since Friday. You guys, I hate doing this video one, two, three, four days in a row of basically the same topic. Um, there's nothing else to talk about. It, call me crazy. Let me know what you think. But this is all the eyeballs on it. I am just dumbfounded by this. We've said this all along. I've said the whole stupid thing that I keep repeating about this being bigger than we think. This is monstrous. There's no way to squirm out of this, sir. There's not. And then this all of a sudden gets the, the trending goes away on Twitter. Dude, take that away. Take Reddit away. You don't think these savages are going to, all of us, every one of us apes, whether you're GME, AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond, Sundial, all the other hundreds of stocks that are out of whack. We're not going anywhere, dude. Pack it up, Kenny. Somebody's going to off you or you're going to get thrown in the slammer, or you're just going to vanish off the face of the earth. This is the end game, folks. This is the end game. I don't care what anybody says. Blast me if you want. There's nothing else to talk about. Between all the over-leveraging, between this horse shit here, it's time to change this shit. I've had a butt full of it. I know we all have. So, yeah, that's nice that that just disappears, right? But who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. Um... I found this to be, I'm sure you guys have seen this, if you have not, Citadel Securities, their Twitter page, haven't been active since, oh, my God, look at the date, January 26th, wouldn't you know, one day before all of the madness in the 137 pages of pure gold, and the buy button taken away on January 28th, January 26th, their last tweet, this right here is... Uh, I meant to pull the article up on Twitter. There was a attorney guy in there, I believe he is, uh, post a lot in there in on Superstock that was going over this tweet line by line, sentence by sentence, wording by wording. It was very good. Uh, I'll try to find it and pop it in the community page or underneath. Long story short, <laughs> I don't know what to think about this here, but I'll tell you what. Citadel Securities did not ask Robinhood or any other firm to restrict or limit its trading activity on January 27th. Ken Griffin and Vlad Tenev have never met or spoken. All caps on the never. When asked whether Citadel Securities requested that Robinhood restrict trading, Ken Griffin truthfully told Congress, let me be perfectly clear, absolutely not. And then there's a little link to the video that we have gone over and everybody has gone over since frickin' Friday. Um, first of all, uh, 
I don't think this is true here. Doesn't matter. The whole point of this is, is this, are they on backed in the quarter, full defensive mode? Who ordered this tweet to come out? I mean, this is very bullish to me. I don't know what to really think of it right this second. Uh, a lot of people are commenting on this, their thoughts, but my God, why on God's green earth, after nine months, two days before the buy button was taken away, are you coming on here and uh, <laughs> covering your ass? <coughs> I don't know. Damage control? You guys, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words with all of this because this has been a journey. This is nine months of a journey, and it's finally... I don't care when the squeeze happens, but all of this shit combined... Man alive. Also, too, for the 900th time of going over this, looking through this, one sentence that I want to touch on here, because we've been talking about Ken Griffin's wording, um, you know, obviously him lying under oath, but the wording in here with this here, they reached out, just this sentence here, just an FYI, this is Gretchen's uh, text or whatever system they use to send these me messages back and forth between Gretchen and Vlad, right? We'll call it a text. Just an FYI that Dan and I are joining Jim at 5 p.m. on a call with Citadel. They reached out and want to speak this evening, and we believe they will make some demands on limiting PFOF across the board. That sentence there. They reached out and want to speak this evening, and we believe they will make some demands on limiting PFOF. I didn't... It's not like I'm making up this theory here, or I just... I thought of it. I don't know if it's out there, if you guys have seen anything about this. But that sentence there tells me that basically um, you guys are going to take away this uh, buy button. You're going to do what we want, or we're going to cut off your PFOF. I haven't seen a lot of that talk out there, but that's basically what that is telling me right there. They're demanding Robinhood to do what they need to do, take away the buy button on the goddamn stocks, or demanding they're <laughs> limiting PFOF across the board. Remember, that is the majority of Robin Hood's income. Does, is that what I'm reading, you guys, or am I completely out of whack? You know, I, I, I'm pissed. I'm relieved. I'm happy that all of this shit has come, all the nine months of everything we thought, all the DD, all the hours of everyone, every single person has all come together and this is the outcome of it. You're fucked. The one thing, you guys, you, you know me. Uh, real quick, I'm going to tell a quick story. This is going to be a wacky video. The reason why, if you guys have been around me, you know every time I bring up that buy button situation, my I seriously, I can feel my face turn hot. I, I get anxiety. I want to punch my face. I want to do a lot of things, right? The reason why... I hate that thievery shit so much. Um, I spent a lot of years, 20 years in the car business, right? A majority of the time, it's a well-known thing. If you, some of you guys are in the car business, let me know if you've ever come across this because it happens everywhere. These dealerships that I have worked for, I'm not naming any of them, some of them that I've worked for on and off throughout 20 years, right? Their whole game is to, to steal. Steal as much money as they can from their employees. It's all about... A lot of these dealers, you know, they're they got they're shuffling money around. Blah blah. Long story short, they try to cut every corner they can, and it starts with salesmen, then management, and so on up the chain. It's it's about taking your money, and no matter what you say, I know my position back in Jan in uh, January, right? This is falls under that same category that just makes me absolutely livid. I don't even know the word for it. Just livid. It's the same. Shit. These guys took away the buy button. Citadel demanded Robin Hood, the others, E-Trade, whatever you want to call them, take away that buy button or else we're going to cut you off. That's what that sentence says to me. Fuckers. God damn it. The stock, 40 bucks a day. Who gives a rat's ass, you guys? Just kind of basically uh, flat throughout the whole damn day. I didn't watch it in pre-market at all. I was watching this uh, shit show over here, uh, Evergrande. And a little bit of GME because it was moving. But who gives a rat's ass? It doesn't matter. Let's touch on this old rat here again. 
64% dark pool every day who gives a shit. Same thing every single god dang day. Uh, this was great. This was just posted over on the AMC Reddit page. Shout out, sir. Water deep. Citadel had to save Melvin because a lot of brokerage and hedge funds were about to find out that Citadel, the market maker, didn't have the shares. Just like Goldman didn't have overstock shares in past litigation. He found this little video here. I'm going to play it. It's only three minutes and give you my thoughts on it. But this was outstanding. Just take a quick listen. He's on with uh, that Lucy. Uh, God dang it. I'll find her name by the time we're done. You, you'll recognize her. When Robin Hood and the long-haired guy who runs it, what's his name? The, Vlad? The greasy guy. Yeah, Vlad. <laughs> when he was on the Cartoon Network, also known as CNBC that day, he said, you know, there's no margin call. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. It's business as usual. Everything's fine, right? To then find out hours later that Robin Hood had a, what, a $3 billion margin call? Something like that. They had a... 2 billion, 3 billion something with DTCC where they needed to raise money on an urgent basis overnight through the VC guys. I think that's sort of the timeline. What everyone should ask themselves is, why did Citadel give Melvin money, right, mm -hmm. as a bailout? Because Melvin was about to go under. Why did Citadel give a billion or 2 billion or whatever they gave Melvin? Why didn't they just give it to Robin Hood? Robin Hood's their customer. Robin Hood is their guy who they play the payment for flow game. If I'm, if you and I, right, are as tight as tight can be, and you have a $3 billion margin call, you call me up and say, hey, Mark, we do all this business. Can you loan me $3 billion for a week? Sure, Lucy. What's it going to cost you? I'll give you 10% of my firm, right? I'll give you 10% and I'll pay you interest. I'll say, no problem. I'll wire that you'll have the money in 4.7 seconds as soon as I hit the return key, right? Why would Ken Griffin not have given Robin Hood money? Why did they give it to Melvin, who had the absolute wrong side of the trade as everyone from Robin Hood? Why? I've never, I've never heard anyone bring it up. I've never heard anyone ask the question. I would, I would like to get the greasy-haired guy, Vlad, Griffin, Warren, Senator Warren, Gensler, head of the SEC, all in a room, all in the room, Melvin in the room, and I'll do the asking of the questions. I'll ask everyone the questions. I'll create the timeline, and everyone can sit there and take notes, and that way we can get to the truth. What would your answer be? Why, why, why did they do that? Why did they... Because uh, I, I, I think Citadel was so upside down in the GameStop, AMC, whatever, MEME stock trades that, that given their leverage, they would have gone under. They would have gone under had this Melvin thing gone another day or so. Because there's no reason that a sane person without lying could say, why would Robin Hood stop one side of the trades that day? Because what Robin Hood did was they completely and utterly destroyed their clients. They completely, when you close one side of the market, the other side of the market, the downside of the market is a huge winner. If you have all buyers and no sellers, stock goes through the roof. When you have all sellers and no buyers, the stock collapses. And in all my years, I'm 61 years old. I've been doing this since I was 16 years old. I've never, ever, ever seen unilaterally one side of a market closed. <laughs> what do you think of that, folks? Everything coming full circle now? You rats. These rats. I've thought about that a half a dozen times, the whole Melvin bailout. You know, I'm like, okay, Plotkin, and, you know, maybe they're, you know, there's obviously small compared to Citadel. Maybe they wanted to, you know, give them a few bucks. They're, they're boys and shit. Maybe Kenny G and Plotkin are boys over there at Melvin. No. No, no, no. Why Why would I even think that? That video right there sums it up. That sums up. Cover Citadel's ass. Oh, you guys. I love y'all. I love y'all. I really do. Uh, in nine months, I, I've never felt so uh, good as I do right now. 
I really do. Um, could something happen where somebody bails out something? I don't have the foggiest, you guys. This, this shit is beyond all of us. It really honestly is. I mean, this is a, a bit, can you imagine Gary over there and, you know, any sort of, uh, of part of this whatsoever, SEC, DT, can you imagine? Because they know a lot, right? Can you imagine the shit show that is over there? Woo, what a time to be alive, boys and girls. Absolute, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's see what tomorrow, tomorrow brings. Maybe tomorrow I'll watch the actual stock maybe for a while. But again, I probably won't because I don't give a shit. These thieves, these scumbags have to cover their short, phantom, made up, bullshit shares that they fucking stole from us back in January and they have kicked the can for nine freaking months, folks. Nine months. Ah, okay, that's it, you guys. I'm kind of in a fog trance. Uh, I kind of feel like I'm on a cloud here. I'm not saying anything. We're not going to be millionaires tomorrow. I don't know. But I'll tell you what. This nine-month journey and everything we've learned and, and for, again, I say it again. I'm going to say it again. I said it last night. For us retail traders, video gamers, geeks that love movie theaters and, and overpriced popcorn and all this shit, we have screwed Wall Street. End of story. This is will change the market forever. Ever, ever, and ever. Okay, guys. I'm done rambling. Oh, I lied. We did go long. 1650. Uh... Leave me some comments. I'm going to read these com some comments tonight. I did last night. Let's go back and forth and figure out. Um, this is really that wording there. Am I am I crazy, you guys? Citadel's basically telling these guys we're going to take away <laughs> limiting PFOF across the board. Oh my God! It just gets better by the hour, you guys. Okay, enough. Enough of me. Love you guys. Talk to you later.